What's up, guys? It's three-time NFL Pro Bowler All-Decade Return Specialist Josh Cribs. I want to welcome you to the College Sports Connection Podcast where AA Alex and AJ host the Mid-American Conference Best. All right, everybody, welcome back to the CSC Podcast, all action all the time. I'm your host, Alex the Captain. Joining me as always, it's AJ the Guru. What's going on, everybody? AJ, two words, tournament season. I'm it so is. pumped. This is, uh, this is a great tournament every year, the Mid-American Conference Basketball Championship. We've got two great brackets going on, the men and the women. Cut through eight teams, three games over the course of four days. This is going to be a good week. This, this we were looking at these brackets earlier. This one's going to be a bloodbath this year. Yeah, absolutely. Because on both sides, you know, besides maybe one or two teams, everybody can win it. Mm-hmm. Everybody has the ability to win it. Um, and there's going to be a lot of closer games than what I think people realize as well. You know, you look at the one through eight seed, and you know, records may not. Then of course the MAC is different, only allowing eight teams in compared to the other conferences who allow everybody in. Mm-hmm. But I, I kind of like this format. I like this a lot better. Because I think it makes it a little more competitive. Mm-hmm. Because you're not going to get that one versus twelve blowout that, that you that you're bound to have. So I think the way the, the, the way the Mac does it is a great with only eight teams, and it makes it you know I think more meaningful getting there because you have four teams sitting at home. Yeah, yeah. I think I think with the with this format, and this was something we talked about earlier. Um, I think it presents presents a little bit of a, what do you want to call it? A little bit more of a, you got to be focused. Um, I think in, in previous events we've had, and, and per, I know you're a fan of this format. I'm not, I personally am not. And I, and I will always make that known. Um, I love the 12 team solely because the first and second seeds had a buy. You got, you know, you, you lock up one of those seeds, you get an opportunity to have a buy to just kind of rest and let the seeds below you kind of battle it out a little bit, wear themselves out to advance. There, mm-hmm. that that advantage is no longer there. So I, I think, while I don't like it, I understand it. You know, obviously that was a decision made post COVID to kind of help cut costs, things like that. So I support it. I don't like it, but I support it. This tournament makes it a lot more interesting with just those top eight. Again, you got to be you've got to be ready to play three games doesn't matter if you're the eight seed doesn't matter if you're the one seed you got to be ready to play three games and because if you don't you go home you're done yeah absolutely and uh you know we're gonna get into it here second i mean tournament starts tomorrow women on uh on the women's side buffalo Mm -hmm. and toledo nine or noon your was it 11 o'clock your time yeah the 11 o'clock my time for the women's uh, quarterfinals games and we got games going all day and i imagine so it looks like the the bracket says 30 minutes between completion of prior game mm-hmm. uh, so i i think it's going to be it's going to be really interesting we've got what i imagine will be an 11 a.m start here for toledo versus buffalo then we've got number four kent state taking on number five northern illinois and i'm going to imagine that that'll be a 1 30 ish maybe two o'clock game sure and then a four thirty ish five o'clock game, and then a seven thirty ish seven o'clock or eight o'clock game for the sure. for the nightcap. So four great games tomorrow. Uh, I'll let you kick it off, man. Yeah, let's get into it. The first game tomorrow: the Buffalo Bulls, the Toledo Rockets. The Rockets are twenty five and four in the year, sixteen and two in the MAC, on a thirteen game win streak, mm-hmm. which is you know shout out to Coach Cullup, who friend of the program. We gotta get her back on. It's been it's been too long, far too long. Uh, but they're gonna be playing Buffalo, who's 12 and 15, 7 and 11 in the conference. Um, the Bulls have won three in a row. Mm-hmm. So you gotta look at the Bulls' last five here. They're, they've won three out of their last five, beat Western 72 to 67, beat Akron 60 or 64 to 50, and beat BG by over almost 20 points, which we just talked about just off the air a little bit ago. Yeah, 84 to 66. This one's gonna be a fun one. I think this game is going to be a lot closer than what people really think. 
I think this one's going to be a lot closer than what people think. And I think, you know, first year head coach Becky Burke over there at Buffalo. Another friend of the program. Another friend of the program has done an excellent job with getting these girls in the right position. I mean, she talked about this to us back when she was on the show and everybody but one player was was gone. It was mostly mm-hmm. seniors and, tra- you know, players who transferred out, whatever. And so everybody who bought in, she's got a lot of young talent, you know, a lot of young players who hit, they bit the bullet and they they buckled in and they they won some basketball games to to lock up this eight seed, which, you know, hell of a grind to them. You know, the teams that got dropped out, Miami, Western Michigan, Ohio, and Central Michigan, you know, good luck to them going into next season. But Buffalo, their record does not is not indicative of what they've done. Like you said, you know, what, seven and 11 in conference play. They Mm -hmm. are not, they've not given up a lot in terms of what they do. And like you said, they pulled that upset against Bowling Green. So I I really think that this is a team who Becky Burke will have them ready. Trisha Cullop will have her girls ready. We're, we're in for a fantastic game in week one or in round one of this tournament. And I'm really excited. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, Toledo heads into this game putting up 73.7 points per game, 8.7 more than Buffalo. Uh, the Rockets are also 21-2 and two in games where they, they score over 65 points. Mm-hmm. So, so matchup prediction on this one. Who who do you think comes out of this one? I think Toledo does, but a lot closer, uh, within 10 points. Within 10 points? Okay. Okay. Toledo, remember, though, Toledo was upset last year. Pluto was upset by Ball State in the first round last year. Yeah. Yes, that was a that was a very real thing. And I mean, that Ball State team looked really good, and they're they're just as good this year too. And we'll, I'm yeah. sure we'll talk about them here in a moment. But yeah, Ball State looked excellent last year in the tournament. Came in, upset Toledo, and yeah, I, I really really think Coach Colup. This is Toledo's second straight regular season MAC championship that they've won outright. Um, I, I think that they've got, they've got the tools in place. I mean, you look at this roster, the Mac, the, the newly minted, newly crowned Mac player of the year, uh, Quinesha Lockett, the, the, again, recrowned coach of the year, Trisha Cullup. Th- this is a team with a lot of star power, especially for the Mid-American Conference, just top to bottom. There's very few weaknesses on this roster. That being said, something that I've always feel has kind of plagued Toledo and Trisha Cullup teams when it comes to the Mid-American Conference Championship. And th- and we've seen this time and time again. Toledo has won several regular season crowns, but can't get it done in Cleveland. And that's nothing against the program, nothing against Coach Cullup. But for whatever reason, Toledo just really seems to struggle once they take the hardwood in Cleveland. Sure. I mean, like we mentioned, they've won 13 in a row. That's hard to do. That's hard to do. Well, and it's uh, not only have they won 13 in a row, this tells you a lot about what the city of Toledo is doing right now. The mm-hmm. Walleye have won 12 in a row, the minor league hockey team, which is a, which is a franchise record. My and former the Toledo, employer. Yep, your former employer. And the Toledo men's basketball team has won 15 in a row. Mm-hmm. So combined in this city, Toledo has won 40 games in a yeah. row which is just unheard of. Sure. So, no, I mean, I th- I think that there's an opportunity here for for Coach Cullop and this program to really be successful. I mean, you know, you talk about these wins that Buffalo's had, especially, you know, the gritty wins. That, that win against Western Michigan was very gritty. Toledo's win against Bowling Green to close out the regular season, very gritty. I really like what both of these teams do, but I think, yeah, I go Toledo on this one. And this is a one too. the coach Burke, you know, she's already made an impact on the program. This could be, this could cement her, you know, establish her, you know, on the higher ups of the conference, because there are so many great coaches in this conference. Yeah, there really are. Um, I mean, you, you look at again, I mean, I don't want to keep saying Trisha Cullip, but she's the one who's when, when we had Jeremy Guy on, he's like, you know, what what can you say about her, right? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you know, Coach Brady has done an excellent job. I mean, just, you know, so uh, Coach Jackson over at Akron, 
she's done a great job. It's, I mean, it's Melissa Jackson, I believe is who's over there, yeah. but I mean, the, this, this whole conference is just loaded with great coaches who've just done an excellent job. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be fun to see good chance for Becky Burke to kind of cut her teeth, even if they don't win good opportunity. I, I think once you get an opportunity in the tournament and you kind of get your feet wet there, you get that experience, right? You, you understand what that's like. And I, and I got that from a friend of mine. We were talking about the Mac tournament and the NCAA tournament the other day. And he said, yeah, you know, that experience is invaluable. You get there, you, you have that experience, you know what it takes to prepare for it. And I think this will be a really great test for coach Burke. Yeah, without a doubt. Move on to the second game of tomorrow, Northern Illinois and Kent state, Northern Illinois, 16 and three on the year, the flashes of Kent state, 20 and nine. Kent State uh, comes into this game after winning three straight home games. <clears throat> this is going to be a fun one. I think this one's going to be one of those ones that is going to be a coin toss when it comes to the winner. I like this one a lot for a couple different reasons. Mm-hmm. They overall record wise, they're not that far off from each other. There, there's a three game separation in the win column or a four game separation in the win column for both of these programs. Kent State sitting at twenty and nine. Northern Illinois sitting at 16 and 13. So I think that there is an opportunity for Northern Illinois to kind of jump up and, you know, do a little bit of damage. This isn't a, this isn't a program that's going to just, you know, lay down and just kind of take it, you know, Jai Davis, she's done excellent for this program. Um, So is Shelby Coker. I mean, just Mm -hmm. these, these are ladies who have just come out and just have fought and fought and fought to to earn their spot and they are what the five seed yeah they're the five seed northern illinois is so i wouldn't be surprised you know if this if this program came out and was just ready you know defensively asia asia i might be asia davis and if you know if she's listening which i hope she's not because i'm butchering her name i think it's asia davis i mean defensively she's averaging 12.5 rebounds a game Mm mm-hmm this is a player who understands how to play while also averaging 16 points a game. So she's averaging a double double. Yeah. Like in women's basketball, you don't do that. And and no. she is, you know, even in the Mid American Conference, you don't do that. So I really, I really love what she's doing. But conversely, you know, you look at what Kent State does. This is a program who, I mean, you know, Katie Shoemate. And yes, yes, I said shoemate because her brother plays for the men's team at Toledo. Mm. JT shoemate. Gotcha. So, how, I mean, how cool is that, right? I mean, but Katie shoemate, same thing on 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 her side. You know, she's averaging twelve points a game. Um, she's averaging over a steal a game. Lindsay Thaw just set some MAC record where, and I, and I forget what it was. I tweeted it out the other day on our Twitter account. But she set some Mac record where she's the only player in Mac history to have something like it was something with her three point shots and just everything. I mean, it's it's a really impressive record. I'm going to see if I can pull it up really quick. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. The only player in Mac history to have over fifteen hundred points, over two hundred made threes and over two hundred blocks. Wow. So a hell of a career for Lindsay Thaw Absolutely. out there at, uh, and she's a senior from Strongsville, Ohio. So she mm. just has done excellent for this program. I'm really, really excited to see how this game matches up. They played each other. They were the, the last time they played each other was for seeding yeah, in, in this tournament. And so, and that was the last game of the regular <clears throat> season. So, I, yeah, this one's going to be a lot of fun because now there's a lot more on the line other than just who are you going to play next week? So these teams know each other. They're familiar. There's going to be a little bit, a little bit more uh, blood in the water for this one. Sure. This is a great opportunity for Northern Illinois to get on the map Mm -hmm. because we don't hear a ton about Northern Illinois basketball. And this is a great, great opportunity for them to make a presence, their presence known on ESPN tomorrow. Uh, That's in the second slot of the day. Third slot of the day is Eastern Michigan and Bowling Green. <laughs> the, we both have some thoughts on this one. We'll get bit. into it. This one's <laughs> going to be interesting because yeah, BG is so good, but they're good when they're good, but when they're bad, they're bad. 
that is a great way to put it. I mean, BG, they're three and two in their last five. They're, they lost the heartbreaker at Toledo. They were up 17 at one point in the second half. And, and, and you're, I think this is where you're, this is one of the instances where you can say when BG's good, they're good until they're not. And then they're really bad. They were up 17 on Toledo at one point. Toledo comes back and wins this game by six. Yeah. So that's a 23 point swing in favor of the Rockets. Uh, you know, again, you're at home. There's emotions at home, whatever. It's senior day. You want to go out. You want to get that win for your seniors. But, but then just three days prior, a gutsy, gutsy overtime win against Ball State for Bowling Green. And then just four days prior, an 18-point loss to Buffalo. Yeah. So they're just so hit or miss this year. Mm-hmm. You know, speaking of that Ball State game there, to end the first quarter of that game, they were up 22-8 to eight going into the second quarter of that game. And ended up going into overtime and then ended up winning by five. Mm-hmm. So you so, kind of look on the year, you know, look on the year for BG though. Statistically, they're, you know, it's it's a roller coaster of emotions, we'll put it that way. Well, they've split the games with well, you know, we're talking about you mentioned Northern Illinois from the last round. They lost that game to Northern Illinois at home. Mm-hmm. They split the season with Ball State. They yep. split the season with Toledo. They split the season with Buffalo. And the last time they played Buffalo at Buffalo, they only won by three. Yep. So, you know, and, and yes, four conference losses, that's a hell of a season. I mean, that's that's 14 and four. That's a great season. I don't care who you are in basketball. You go 14 and four in conference play, you're probably going to have a pretty high seed come – Come your tournament. And and that's that's no case, or that's the same case for Bowling Green. They are the two seed coming into this tournament. But their last one, two, three, four, five, six games, they're three and three after mm-hmm. ripping off after ripping off an eleven and one record in conference play. Yeah. So I just I, I don't know. It's uh it's 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 tough. I, I I'll let you kind of carry on with the thoughts. I think they've got you know Allison Day has been an absolute stud for them. You know she dropped thirty one on Toledo the first time they played, but her last two games she's kind of disappeared. Uh, the Toledo game she this most recent Toledo game that she was gone. Alyssa Brett was kind of the superstar for them, uh, scoring twenty three points. I I just. And then uh, Lexi Fleming was their defensive uh, defensive star. She collected seven rebounds for the for the Falcons in that game. In what was a very low scoring game, and I think that's going to be the key. Just kind of looking at it, if you can get Bowling Green to stay under seventy points, you can beat them. Mm-hmm. That they're a very beatable team. If you can go out and you can shoot, I mean Toledo held Bowling Green to a season low fifty six points in this last game. Which is right. a little, a little insane. No, without a doubt. And you kind of look at it too here. You know, Lachelle Austin racked up twenty five points against Ohio mm-hmm. uh, last game of the season. Ohio won that. Excuse me, uh, Eastern won that by 10, 74 to sixty four. Yep, she's going to be the key for Eastern to stay involved in this game. Driving yes. twenty five points is going to be massive for her. And so I really think you look at Eastern. You know, sitting there, 50, just one game above 500, 15 and 14, playing a 25 and 5 uh, Bowling Green. You know, Eastern has nothing to lose. Eastern Go has there, absolutely nothing to lose. Nothing, nothing at all. And so it'd be a fin- fantastic opportunity, just like we talked about with Northern Illinois, to put them on the map and put them on the national stage, like they will be, and uh, in, in Cleveland. And, and that's going to be great for the program, but this is going to be a really close game. I, I think I'll tell you this back. This is going to be a close game at halftime, but I think BG ends up pulling away in the second half. I think BG pulls away in the second half. This is Eastern's going to Eastern's going to play them tough. You know, yeah. I'm I'm sitting here and I'm kind of looking at Eastern Michigan's schedule, and it looks like they played Bowling Green once this year, and it was at Bowling Green. They lost seventy nine to sixty three. But as I dive on dive in a little bit further. 
if Eastern Michigan, Eastern Michigan was held to nine points in that, in that matchup, yep. but actually won the second quarter. Mm-hmm. And then the third quarter again, comes out flat there. They only scored 10 in the third, but then they hold BG to 11 in the fourth. So I think that this, if B, if Eastern can get a little bit more consistent going into, going into this, cause that's a 41 to 32 game at, at the break or 44 to 32 game at the break. Right. When they, uh, when they played the last time. So I just, I think if Eastern can play a little bit tougher, all four quarters, and that's going to be their problem. They've been inconsistent. They it, mm-hmm. all four quarters has not been their thing. They can play all no. four quarters. I think Eastern has a real shot, but I do think Bowling Green's experience and toughness, Coach Robin Freilich, excellent job there. I, I I think Bowling Green probably walks away with this one. Yeah, I would agree. I think that's uh, I think that's kind of the the thing where we you know we're it's hard to say because Eastern is. Like they're kind of like BG though. When they're good, they can be good. Yeah, and they're gonna. Well, I mean, yeah, great. they're they're sitting at fifteen and fourteen. So I mean, they yeah. have the they have the tools to win, and they started the season nine and four. Yeah, they did. Like they looked really good to start the season. Granted, their schedule wasn't overly tough, but you got a young team that you want to get those guys experience. You want to get or you want to get those girls experience. So I I don't fault them for a a week or non-conference schedule. In fact, that's exactly what happened last year with Toledo. And mm-hmm. I don't want to keep running back to that, but I remember just how shocked everybody was Toledo lost to ball state last year and then didn't get an NCAA tournament bid after going 17 and one in conference play after going, I think they Toledo went something like 24 and six, 24 and seven. And everybody was shocked that they didn't yeah. get a, a bid but Toledo didn't play anybody last off season this year. No. And we can talk about this after we finish the bracket, but you know, this year, I think there's an opportunity for multiple Mac teams on the women's side to get into the tournament, but we can finish that discussion here in a minute. We've got one more matchup for the first round for the women. Yeah. Ball state and Akron. This one's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Ball state sitting at 24 and seven on the year and Akron 17 and 12. Uh, this is going to be fun. I think this I like might this be one. this might be the matchup of the first round. This is what at, the three versus six seed, right? Three versus six. Yeah, you look at the Ball State's last five. They have struggled a little bit. They lost that overtime to Bowling Green. Uh, they beat Miami of Ohio. Lost to Toledo by two. Waxed to Western Michigan, eighty to forty nine, but lost to Northern Illinois, eighty four seventy seven. Mm-hmm. This one's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I so, think what with, with Coach Brady has done at the Ball State program over the past couple of years too. It's been a gradual incline for him, uh, with especially with the girls that he's had on this team the past couple of years. You look at, you know, my girl Allie Becky. We were you and I were in all of her last year. We we were high on Allie Becky, who I think second team All Mac this year. So congrats to her. Yep. Um, and then um, August daughter. Yep. Um, Thelma's August daughter. Yep. yep. She was, uh, she was named all team Mac as well. So, I mean, this, this ball state team is just, there's a lot of talent here. And like you said, you know, what coach Brady has done, there has been nothing short of excellent. And I, I like this matchup. I really, really, really like this matchup for both of these programs. You know, it's a, it's a tough one. I mean, you know, it's hard to judge them off of their their losses and their wins mm-hmm. because they both play such a different style of basketball. I don't know. I just looking at me. these scores, it's just interesting. Yeah. Akron loves to score a lot. That's yeah. that's a big thing, but they also give up a lot of points. They do. Yeah, this is one that can reminds me of Ball State Toledo last year. Mm-hmm. Both two great teams, and if you there was an upset, nobody would be shocked. Yeah, we got to look at Ball State. I mean, they're averaging seventy-seven point seven points per game, twelve more than Akron at seventy at sixty-seven point five, uh, and the Cardinals are twelve or twenty-one and five when they score at least um, sixty-six points on the year. So obviously, Ali Becky is going to be the person to watch. Yeah, five point nine rebounds and uh, five point one assists on the year. She leads Ball State in both of those. I really and- like. 
for Ball State, you know, I really like, and I'm going to butcher this last name, Anna Clefane, Clefane, Mm -hmm. Anna Clefane, I think. This is a girl who can ball who just kind of, kind of surprised me this year. I don't, I don't want to say that, you know, I didn't know that she could ball, but it just feels like last year we didn't hear much out of her. This year she came out, she's averaging over 15 points a game. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a good offensive piece, and I and I realize she's a senior now, but that's what I'm saying. Last year, I feel like we didn't know much about her. You know, no. now then on the other other side of the ball, you look at Rochelle uh, Martindale. She mm-hmm. leads uh, Akron in three point shooting at 31. percent mm-hmm. She'll be one to watch, and also with Dominique Camp averaging 10.7 with three and a, uh, three point seven assists and four and a half steals per game. And I don't think you can forget Reagan Bass either. The the sophomore, she, I mean, she's been such a critical piece to this offense. You know, she's almost averaging 17 points a game. And I mean, you and I both know in women's basketball, there's not a lot of, there's not as much scoring um, often or as often as there is with the men. So if you're averaging 17 points a game in the mid American conference, you're doing something right. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of look down the rest of these games. You know, that's the last game of the weekend. But I have Toledo, Kent State, BG, Ball State winning first round. So we're going chalk the first round then, huh? Yeah. Okay. I I I think I'm also going to go Toledo. I'm going to go Kent State. Just because I don't think there's any upsets in the first round, I'm going to also go chalk. But I think from there it gets a little hairy. We've got Toledo taking on Kent State, Bowling Green taking on Ball State. This is where it gets interesting. Very. Any of these four teams could win it. And I don't want to say, oh, if Kent State wins against Toledo, they're winning the tournament, or Ball State beats BG, they're winning the tournament. But I but I think there's a legitimate argument that if one of these four teams goes out and and just throttles whoever they're playing. That they have to be the front runner. I know Toledo and Bowling Green are the prohibitive favorites in terms of betting favorites, mm-hmm. but I really, really think any of these teams winning would not sh- shock me. I think Kent State would be the one who would shock me the most. Um, but I, but I really think Toledo, Bowling Green, Ball State, or Kent State could absolutely win this tournament. Absolutely. Okay. On to the men's side. Well, let me before we get to the men's side, let me ask who are you picking to win the tournament? Who are who's who's in your title game and who's uh who's walking away with a bid to the NCAA tournament? Oof. I think it ends up being <laughs> Toledo. I think it ends up being Toledo and Ball State. In the finals? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, I, who are you picking? I think just because of experience, I think Toledo ends up winning it. You think Cullop finally gets them over the hump again? I think so. I think this is her year. Now, something that's interesting. We've got Akron is the sixth seed. This is something to keep in mind. I was was doing a little bit of extra research. um, And Toledo has won it out of the sixth seed before. In fact, and I'm going to pull up their history really quick of this tournament. So last year, it was the it was the two seed to win it. Took on the five seed in the championship. Yep. The year Ball before, State Buffalo. yep. The year before, the two seed won it. Twenty twenty, no tournament was played. Although we were down to our final four in Toledo, Ohio, Eastern Michigan, and Kent State. So the one and the two seed were both eliminated. Yeah. Um. So we were definitely not getting a one or a two seed champion. In in two thousand nineteen, the four seed won it. The one seed was eliminated. The and it was 2018 was the last time the one seed won it. That was Central Michigan over Buffalo. We also saw the year prior, Toledo took on Northern Illinois in the title. And the final four was the four seed, the six seed, the seven seed, and the eight seed. Nice. So this is a tournament that can be won out of any seed, and I know we've talked about that already. This is a tournament that can absolutely be won out of any seed. So, this tournament, you throw the records away. I wanted to bring up one more point before we get to the men's side. If Toledo or Bowling Green loses the finals, 
do either one of them get an at-large bid? I think they deserve it, and here's why. Toledo has the best resume of anybody in the conference. Toledo has the best record. Toledo has the, you know, whatever. I think if you put Toledo in the NCAA tournament, let's just say they lose in the semifinals to Kent State, whatever. Toledo's resume includes a loss to Duke, who is now ranked in the top 15 in the country, a one-point questionable call loss to Penn State at at a tournament, a win over 15-ranked Michigan at the time, who, by the way, Michigan is, and I'm going to pull their record up really quick. At the time, they were undefeated, but they are now ranked 18 in the country. Mm -hmm. Toledo has an ugly one-point loss to Northern Illinois. And that's like really the only questionable blemish on their on their resume. They've got the win over Wright State. They've got a overtime win at Cincinnati. Um, they've got a big win over Missouri State. You've got the win over Oakland, the win over Day- Dayton. I think Toledo has the resume to get an at large. But also, I think Bowling Green has the resume to get the at-large. I think that their path is a little trickier. They have a really ugly loss to to Indiana. Yeah. And that's their only non-conference loss. Everything else, they've got the win over Detroit Mercy, Valparaiso, Eastern Tennessee, IUPU. Um, They've got, I mean, they've just got so uh, St. Bonaventure, uh, Wright State. So, I mean, they've got a lot of really great wins. Texas A&M uh, Commerce. Um, so, I mean, this this is a team who th- they deserve it. But I think for them, they have to win the MAC tournament. I don't think they can get in as an at-large. No, I don't think so either. It's going to be tough for any MAC school to get that at-large right now, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But if there is going to be a team, it would be Toledo, I think. I think, yeah, I think Toledo has the resume. I think they're in the top 60 with their net rating. So, like, when it comes to that, you got you to look at that because the the women's side does 64 teams as well, right? Yes. So you got to you got to do you got to look at the net rating. Toledo fits what a tournament team looks like. You know, they've got the resume, like I said, 25 and four a slightly better record, I believe, than last year. So it's it's not out of the realm of possibility. But, I, I mean, who knows? Yeah, last year they were 29 and 6. So they've got less losses than last year's team. So, and that 29 and 6 is counting their WNIT run as well. So gotcha. th- that's, a, that's a team that very much, I think, would deserve it. And I would say that for any of our MAC teams who knocked off ranked opponents who had the season that Toledo just had. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, without a doubt. So that's it for the women's side. Let's move over to the men's side and check out what we got going on over here. I really, really, really like this men's tournament starting on Thursday. So we've got Miami, Ohio taking on Toledo in the first round. Miami sitting at 12 and 19, 6 and 12 in the MAC. Toledo is 25 and 6, 16 and 2 in the MAC. Vastly different seasons for both of these programs, but Miami have won out four out of their last five. Toledo obviously on a 15 game win streak. Miami winning four out of their last five. And they've been absolutely critical wins in order to make it to Cleveland. They are the eight seed taking on for the third year in a row, the number one seed Toledo Rockets. Mm-hmm. Tell you what, is there an athletic director in the country who's having a better year than uh, Brian Blair? <laughs> I tell you what, man, you know, you, you inherit a great, great basketball program in both the men and the women's side. You inherit an excellent cross country and track and field program or a cross country program. And you inherit a pretty good football team. So in his first year, uh, cross country won a uh, MAC championship. Football won a MAC championship and their bowl game. The men and the women repeated as regular season champions. 
if you're Brian, Brian Blair, you are riding high, you are enjoying this, but you're also looking at how they can get even better. You know, this sure. he, he's talked all the time about, you know, making Toledo not only one of the best group of five programs, but the best group of five program um, consistently. And and he's already looking at, well, how, how can we improve on this? That's cool that they won the regular season. And let's assume they win the MAC, right? That's cool that they do that, but how can we do that again? How can we take that next step? How can we schedule better teams so we can continue to do that? So, yeah, hats off to him. I mean, great first year. I, I don't think anybody could ask for a better first year, frankly. No. I don't know. We'll get to, hopefully we'll get to talk to him at media day this year and kind of recap all of it. But, yeah, yeah I mean, the men on Toledo side, back at it again. Mm-hmm. Back at it again. And, man, what a <laughs> what a season they've had. Like I said, they started the season off with that win uh, versus Valparaiso. Then they did the Barstool Invitational where they knocked off a team from last year's NCAA tournament, the UAB Blazers, who are now sitting at 23-8 and eight this year. So good chance that they're a tournament team this year too. And they knocked them off pretty handily. But then Toledo just went on an absolute tear um, in conference play. They've got a couple ugly losses on the resume. Lost versus Kansas City and a loss to Eastern Carolina, which not great. East Carolina is 15 and 16 on the season. Uh, Kansas City, 11 and 21. You don't want to lose those games. Those those are those are rough games to lose. But their only two MAC losses are to current conference championship teams, Ball State and Kent State. Toledo's won 15 in a row. How yeah. do you, if, if you are Miami, are you hoping to just keep this thing within 20? Probably at this, at this rate. Yeah. That's a tough first round draw. As a tough first round draw and Miami, you know, again, not to discredit anything they've done. They've won four other last five have had to do so in order to make it to the Mac tournament and get that eight seed. But man, Toledo is cruising right now this is is a really tough toledo program who and they're not winning games overly close i mean their closest games have been at bowling green where they won by five um they blew akron out by 21 they blew buffalo out by 30 beat central by 34 Mm -hmm. and then to round out the season at a really great is it wharton arena Worthen, Worthen Arena, yeah. yeah, against Ball State, and you know they won that by six. Ray J. Dennis, I have to assume is probably the Player of the Year. We that's not been announced yet, but if if I had to take a guess, and you know, you uh, we put money on it, I would say at this point, Ray J. Dennis is absolutely the Player of the Year for the Mid American Conference. But I'll tell you what, this just looking across their stats. This has absolutely been a team win season. It's Mm -hmm. not just been one player doing all the work. It's been, it's been all of them. I mean, you've got guys like Ray J. Dennis, JT Shoemate. You've got Raheem Moss, Cedric Milner. Uh, I mean, these are all just their starters who have just come out and just they've done what they needed to do. Miami, they've got some ballers too. I'm not going to discredit what Miami's done. Makai Larry has had an excellent season, um, both offensively. And defensively, Morgan Stafford has done excellent on the rebounds. Anderson Mirambo has done excellent. Um, he's got a 54.2 field goal percentage, which is just pretty solid. So, I mean, I I like what Miami's done, especially after the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They lost seven in a row in conference play mm-hmm. and then turned it around to win to win six out of their last eight to make it to the tournament. So I, I really like what Miami's done. I just don't see Miami getting away from the first round. I don't think so either. I think Toledo, you know, coming in off a hot year last year as well and losing a guy to the NBA draft. Um, Ryan Rollins. Able, Rollins, yeah, been able to keep it up the way they have. I think this first round is I think this is first round breeze for Toledo. I think so too, but I think that that's what got Toledo in trouble with Akron last year. They were looking past Akron. They were, they were looking to the championship. They, they knew we're the favorites. So we're just kind of looking ahead. 
So I caution Toledo, don't don't do that this year. You know, sure. You've got you've got a drought that you're looking to end. It's I believe it's 46 years since Toledo has last made the um the NCAA tournament. Uh, which is hard to believe too. Well, with as much success as they've had, yeah. The last time the Mac had two bids for the men's teams was 1999. Wow. So it's been 24 years. So I don't see that ending this year. Um, but it's it's very much a... Uh, yeah, I, I just... I want to see... Personal bias aside, yeah. The The last time they made the NCAA tournament was 1980. And that was the last time they won the conference tournament. Check this out. So... They won the conference regular season championship in 2007, 14, 21, 22, 23. Um, and then the last and only conference tournament championship they've won was 1980. Really? Toledo made the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament in 1979. Um, that was, I'm assuming, back when the, the MAC got multiple bids. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they they have not. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to see. Oh, I I did not realize Toledo actually played in the championship game of the WNIT back in night or in the NIT back in nineteen forty three. Back when it was a really prestigious tournament. Sure. Um, yeah. So just a lot of a lot of interesting things to kind of look at here. But no, Toledo has not won or has not been to the NCAA tournament since nineteen eighty. So forty three years. I, I never would have guessed that. Well, especially with the recent success and history they've had. So they know that that pressure's on them. You know, I know Coach Todd Kowalczyk knows that. I really caution them one game at a time. It's a three-game series. Focus on the first game first. Exactly. Moving on, we've got Ohio Ball State. This is an intriguing matchup. We've got Ohio coming in at the five seed, taking on Ball State at the four seed. Ohio 18 and 13, 10 and 8 in MAC play, Ball State 20 and 11, 11 and 7 in conference play. I'm really, really liking this matchup for both of these programs. I think Ohio is the slight favorite just because, you know, Coach Bowles has just been here. He's he's very familiar with the MAC tournament, the NCAA tournament. But I, I don't want to discount what Ball State has and what, what they've done. Like they've yeah. they've really had a great turnaround under their first first year coach, Coach Lewis. Yeah, absolutely. I think the thing that hurts Ball State right now is the injuries. Late mm-hmm. season injuries have really hurt Ball State going you know, li- they're kind of limping into this tournament essentially. Mm-hmm. Um so I don't know if Peyton will be back or not. I I'm think assuming... they were they were saying he might be back. He I think back, he just yeah. sat out the Toledo game just to to rest. Be ready for this. If he's back, then that's a huge game changer for Ball State. Mm-hmm. But even Coach Lewis, what he's been able to do this year with that program, I mean, my four years at Ball State, they struggled. And so being able to make the change as quickly as he has there, um, it's a phenomenal effort, phenomenal job by him. But mm-hmm. you're right, this one is an intriguing game. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And, you know, OU, they're a team that's always here. You know, they're a team yep. who's won games in the tournament. They've knocked off defending national champions. Back in was that 2021, they knocked off Virginia. Mm-hmm. So, nevertheless, they've been here before. They've done it, but I think it's all going to depend on Ball State's health in this game. In my in my opinion. So, interesting thing of note: back in what was the date? Would have been back in January 10th. Back on January 10th, Ball State and Ohio played. At the Convocation Center down in Athens. And Ball State lost that one 76-71. So this one a little bit more, a little bit more weight to it, a little bit more high stakes. I think both teams are a lot different than they were now, or than they were then. then sure. Um, you know, uh is it uh Jaron Coleman, Jaron Coleman? Sure, Coleman, yeah. Yeah, I mean this is a kid who can ball. Um, I'm not, I don't think that he's one of those guys that is going to take the game over, but I mean, he comes out and he shoots well. 
um, Quincy Adams. I mean, th- this is just a, a solid team top to bottom. You know, you talked about Peyton Sparks um, and what he brings to this offense for Ball State and this defense, really. I mean, you know, he's he's averaging almost 60% field goal, which is impressive. Um, yeah. You know, rebounds, almost nine rebounds a game. Again, impressive. Um, yeah, I really like what Ball State brings to the table. But again, don't don't count out the Bobcats. You know, I've got Dwight Wilson, who's just crushing it. Jalen Hunter coming out, and he's doing really well with his assist. He's almost averaging five assistant games. And then defensively, you know, A.J. Clayton, you know, he's averaging almost a full block a game, which doesn't sound impressive. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend. But blocks aren't an easy stat to pick up. And I don't think people realize that, you know, people are like, oh, he's already averaging a block a game. You're not going to go out and average seven blocks a game. That's like not realistic. So, I mean, this is an AJ Clayton. He's a guy who can come out and he can ball too. So Ohio really has some great tools in their toolbox. Coach Bowles has been here before. This is not unfamiliar territory with him. I really like this matchup for both of these teams. That one is going to be the bloodbath of the first round. Yeah, absolutely. So moving on, we've got Northern Illinois taking on Kent State. Kent State, the number two seed after after beating Akron this past week. They are taking on the seven-seeded Northern Illinois Huskies. This one, I think we're going to see a similar result to Toledo, Miami. Uh, Yeah, I agree. I don't, I, and I don't want to discount what Northern Illinois has done. They've done a really nice job to get to this point. A massive turnaround from previous years. But Kent State has sincere carry. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I hate saying that, but Kent State has sincere carry. Still. Yeah, still. He's been there forever. He's been there for a thousand and ten years. He's actually only a senior, not a red shirt or anything. He's just a true senior. But, but you know, David Coit for Northern Illinois, the guard. I mean, he's done an excellent job this year. Um, rebounds. You've got Anthony Crump paces Northern Illinois. Um, you've got Myron Thomas paces Kent State at five point one rebounds a game, and then assist. You've got Caleb Thornton. This is a this is a name that pops up a lot in the Mid American Com- Conference. Caleb Thornton has done an excellent job, just being a machine on defense and helping to move the ball around on offense. I mean, this is a kid who's he comes out, he works hard. I love to see that for him. But again, sincere carry. I just really like what he does. This is a kid who can ball. He can move the ball around. He can make you miss. He makes you look silly. What is interesting, however, and this is why I think Kent State is actually going to win this game. They matched up one other time this year. Northern Illinois beat them at their place, 86 to 76. Now, I don't remember the situations around that game. There was something going on with Kent State, but they're remembering that. And they sure. and they remember that and they're they're thinking about that. This is after Kent State, they had just I don't say they just, but they had lost to, they had had a brutal uh, schedule for their non-conference, including a game at number two Houston and at Gonzaga within a week of each other. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they ripped off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten straight wins. And then finally fell to Northern Illinois. So I think, I think that this is a game Kent State is they've had they have circled on their calendar. They're really focused. They're locked in, ready to go. And I and I don't think Northern Illinois will match up, but it is March. It's madness for a reason. I really, really like Kent State in this matchup. Yeah, I do too. I like Kent State for those same reasons. Because since Sarah Carey is a guy who can take over a game extremely quickly and easily. Um, but I think this is a game where Kent State wins it by heck 15 or 20. Yeah, I I could see a fifteen or twenty point win, and and it wouldn't be and it wouldn't be out of it. like I wouldn't be shocked, right? You know, it's one of those. It's like oh, Northern Illinois could maybe win this one, but I wouldn't be shocked to see to see a massive blowout in favor of Kent State. 
And then moving to the last matchup of Thursday, we've got Buffalo taking on Akron. The three seed taking on the six seed. This one's an interesting one. I think Akron probably wins this one. Nothing against what Buffalo's done, but I think their dynasty, at least temporarily, is over. I think that their kind of run as the king of the conference is is done. They come into this one 15 and 16, 9 and 9 in Mac play. Akron 21 and 10, 13 and 5 in Mac play. I really, really think Akron is my dark horse in this tournament. And and I say dark horse because they're not the one seed or the two seed, but I really like what Akron's done this year. Um, Xavier Castaneda, I think if Sincere Carey or Ray J. Dennis isn't player of the year, seeing Xavier Castaneda win it wouldn't shock me. Sure. Um, Because, I mean, he's a baller. Sure, and he had last year in the championship. We saw Ke- uh, Akron and Kent State, and Kent State, after you know a tweet that went out and hmm. kind of threw a wrench into everything. And what just a cool environment that was to watch both of those programs play, being what thirteen miles away from each other, something mm-hmm. like that. Well, yeah, then that's uh, I mean, but that but that's what you want with a rivalry game, right? You want mm-hmm. you want it for all the marbles. You know, you get to say I beat you on the way to going to the next level, the NCAA championship, the, you know, whatever. So yeah, I think it's a really, really awesome thing for the, for those programs to get that. But looking at this, I really, really do like, I really like Akron in this one, you know, it's, I I do too. You know, Curtis Jones for Buffalo has done an excellent job and, not to take anything away from what Buffalo has done to get to this point, but they literally had to win the last game of the year to, to, to make this tournament. Um, They beat Northern Illinois at Northern Illinois, but then they beat Miami at home and they had to win that game to make the tournament. Um, Armani Foster has done a great job for them. Uh, Laquil Hardnett, you know, this, this team just feels like it's very much focused around Curtis Jones, which is Mm -hmm. fine. Nothing against that, but when he leads the team with a forty-one percent field goal percentage, right? That's not great. That's no. that's not gonna win you many many basketball games. It's not gonna win you many tournaments. That's for sure. Not at all. So that's it for my first round. I think overall, my first round, I'm probably probably gonna go chalk. Toledo, Ball State, Kent State, and Akron. But I think that we're gonna see think that we're going to see ball state and kent state in the finals i think it's a strong possibility i really do i mean ball state you know as i mentioned it all depends on their health going into this this tournament um as long as they're healthy they can be in the finals with no problems who are you uh putting in the finals assuming ball state is you know where they're at health wise and everything sure i mean i I could see hmm. Like a Ball State Akron, okay. I could see that, uh, but I think you know you look at Toledo. I think they could have easily have a slip up in the second round. Mm-hmm. Well, that yeah, I think I think there's an opportunity for a slip up in the second round, and I, and I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and pretend that I don't want Toledo to win it. I, you know, as as a Toledo guy, I would love to see them win it, but I'm also trying to be very realistic, and I think that as terrible as it sounds is until Toledo proves to me, they can win it. I don't think they can win it. If that makes any sort of sense. Um, Now that being said, I've been wrong before. You know, we, we talked in the football championship that Ohio coming in just looked unbelievable. And Toledo came out and um, beat them, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's anything's possible. It is March. Like I said, Maybe this is the year Toledo finally gets over the hump and we send two teams to the NCAA tournament with both Toledo men and women's. Maybe right. this is the year that that happens, whatever. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised to see. I would, frankly, I would really love to see Ball State and Akron in this in the championship or even Ball State, Kent State. As much as I would love to see Toledo there and win it, Ball State or Kent State, I think would probably be one of, one of the best games of the weekend. I think so too. Yeah, that'd so, be a lot of fun. That'd be really high scoring. 
be really high scoring for sure. And unfortunately for the men, nobody has the resume to get an at large. I don't think Toledo maybe, but you'd have to lose by like a point in the championship and it would have to be off of a controversial call. Like it, so many things would have to fall the right way. You'd have to rely on other tournaments to do certain things, whatever. I don't know, man. I'm excited. We've got four full days of Maction uh, for the men and the women. Starting tomorrow morning. Starting tomorrow morning. I can't believe it. Well, it'll be this morning by the time you guys get this episode. Right. 9 o'clock a.m. my time. So that'll be a fun way to start the day. But I think, you know, it's hard to believe. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago we were in Cleveland doing this. And uh, then you'll be here this weekend. We also, I want to shout out to Western Michigan Hockey. They start their tournament this weekend playing Colorado College up at Western. Unfortunately, that's at Western. I wish it was out here in Colorado. I'd be there. But a huge shout out to the men's, uh, men's Bronco a hockey team be a, as they start their tournament run. But we've had so many championships the past week at the Mid-American Conference. We've had swimming and diving. We've had mm-hmm. hockey. Oh, of course, hockey is not a sponsored sport, but nevertheless, that starts this week. Then Mac basketball. We've mm-hmm. had baseball games. We've had softball games. We've had everything going on here. A lot of great action, a lot of great action happening right now in the in the conference all across the country. Big shout out to both Kent State and Toledo softball teams. They both had some fly the flag moments this past weekend. Toledo knocked off Northwestern, um, and Kent State knocked off Pitt. That's uh, I think Pitt needs to start thinking about joining the Mid American Conference because they've now lost in basketball to I want to say it was. Northern Illinois this past year. Mm-hmm. Their softball team just lost to Kent State, and their football team lost to Western Michigan a, two years ago. So yep. I think if I'm Pitt, we start looking at moving from the ACC to to the Mid American Conference. That might be more your speed. But all, well. but all jokes aside, that's uh, no. Congrats to both of those programs. Uh, also, big shout out to Eastern Michigan Lacrosse getting their first win of their of their brand new season, their first ever season as a college lacrosse program. Congrats to coach Sarah Tisdale. This, this program, you know, this is 12 goals in the, in this opening win. So, I mean, very, very impressive for them. Final score of 12 to seven over Delaware state. I, I tell you what, Sarah Tisdale is one of my favorite people to talk to from this conference. And we've had a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of, great conversation with her and it's just really awesome to see what she's doing over there at um eastern michigan yeah absolutely we had breakfast with her a couple of months ago had a fantastic conversation uh about the new about the change about the program and the direction it's going and i think they uh it's only going to get better yeah i think so she's i mean she's she's a proven winner every stop she makes. So hats off to her hats off to the girls over there. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited for what they do. I'm excited to get up there for a few games this year. Absolutely. Well, cool, man. Um, good luck to ball state. Good luck to all the Mac teams. Good luck to Toledo, obviously, but uh, good luck to all the Mac teams this week as they compete in the mid American conference championship. It's going to be a fun week. It's going to be a chaotic week, but I'm here for it. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. And next time you guys hear from us, we will have two newly crowned Mac champions and talking about the first round of postseason basketball. Really looking forward to it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see you next week. See you.